Welcome to the sixth edition of Legal Affairs. I'm Stephen Yap. In the studio today, we have Mr. Lawrence Ma, the chairman of the Hong Kong Legal Exchange Foundation. Now, in this episode, we will show you evidence of how foreign spies actually infiltrated into our community and actively directing public protest. From the 2014 Occupy Central to the 2019 Anti Extradition Bill riot, we have seen a few Anglo Saxon Caucasians kept showing up at the scene and were caught directing, coordinating, communicating with riot ringleaders. In October, the Central intelligence agency commonly known as the CIA established a new China mission center to tackle an increasingly adversarial Chinese government. The sequence of events really begs the question do we have foreign spies in Hong Kong? Lawrence why foreign spies need to infiltrate Hong Kong? Well as we have covered in the last episode there is uh, the American China containment policy China containment policy was a secret policy which they deny ever exist. The China containment policy has a lot of fronts and one of that is um, military front. That, that means they would use military force to actually go into a regime to topple it because if that regime does not become complacent with American interest. Um, you have seen America sending troops to Middle East countries, you know, killing for example Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden, all these people in the Middle East country who were not listening to the US. Now, to send troops into a country is one thing, but that would be very, first very costly. It costs a lot of money. It costs about a million dollar US a year to send a soldier to a foreign country to have to fight a war. And that would first money, second casualty, because people will die in a war. So, and that would um, create a lot of um, anti-government voices or adverse um, public opinion back in America. People don't want their kids to be sent to war. Public opinion is the second thing. So in order not to have a war, they started to create something like proxy wars. That means they start to use people, descendant powers, um, oppositions, political opponents inside a country or a city for Hong Kong to use them, to train them, to fund them, to supply them so that they would become a force strong enough to topple their own government. That's why we call it a proxy war. Now, how is America, who is situated in another side of the world, be able to use proxies, local proxies, to fight their war? they would need someone in between. Someone in between, they would be operatives, CIAs, you know, they are secret agents who would be able to come all the way from America, who has all the, all the knowledge of how to, uh, to run the color, color revolution, which they have done a lot, a lot of color revolutions, obviously, um, in uh, Arab Spring in, in, in uh, Egypt, um, the Sunflower Revolution in Taiwan, and the umbrella movement in Hong Kong in 19, uh, 2014. So they, they have all this knowledge and all this mm -hmm. way and experience to, to how to topple government. They've sent these agents and operatives from America all the way to Hong Kong under cover of a diplomat. They would come into American embassy uh, in, in Beijing, for example, or in the American consulates in Hong Kong under cover as, the, as a diplomat they would have full diplomatic protections. So whatever law they've uh, contravened in Hong Kong, they would, could not be um, caught and sent to jail. So that would give them sufficient cover. Now, right, these people would come here to train people and, and, and to teach how descendants of, 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 of in, our, in our city to overturn our government. That's why um, America would want to topple um, our government in Hong Kong. Lawrence, to what extent uh, were foreign spies involved in Occupy Central in 2014? Now, Stephen, to, not, to understand that, we have to look at some hard evidence. This, this was a, a picture taken by a, um, a reporter who was happened at the scene uh, before the 2014 Occupy Central. In the center of the photo is Miss Julia Edda, 
who was the U.S. Consul Political Affairs in Consul Generals in Hong Kong. And she was talking to Joshua Wong, who was a known figure in anti-government protests, and Nathan Law, who is now absconded as a fugitive in Australia. So you see that she is actually actively seeing those people, not caring that even in public. Why would these people would be in common? They would have common interest in opposing our Hong Kong government, and that that is how liaison with local oppositions. Well, the second photo shows that this is a journal report uh, from the Bahunia magazine back in 2013. Now that recorded the Hong Kong America Center, which is a center led by the Hong Kong United States Consul General which is the real boss behind this center. And in that uh, center, they did conduct training se sessions. Mm -hmm. Those training sessions were led by a very experienced, we believe, a CIA operative, Mr. Hobbuk, Mr. Morton Hobbuk III. And he was here teaching some 30 to 50 students. As you all know that all these color revolutions were first started off by students, then led by, uh, joined by citizens, and then participated by other fractions of the community. So to start off with students is how they did it. And then in, in, on, the, on the front, they were talking about polit, polit, uh, uh, democracies and general politics, but in, instead, they were trained to how to negotiate in public order events, in protests, in public protests, how to deal with governments, how to deal with the police, and how to set bottom lines. And these were all trainings. And then during this training, we have discovered that some 200 people during the Occupying Central in 2014, 200 people who are backbone of the, of the Occupying Central um, movement were actually participated in being trained in the Hong Kong American Center back before. Mm. So that, that is the, how they train and liaise with us. And then the next slide is that we can see in the video clip, Mr. Sixtus Lam, who has been disqualified as a leg legislative councillor for saying something like Hong Kong is not China. Remember, he was disqualified. And that was the scene when he was having a communication with Guo Wen Gui. Gu we'll tell you who Guo Wen Gui was later on. But he was talking to him and Guo Wen Gui was telling him, yep, give it to me, we'll fund your operation. And then before I was uh, talking to you, I've spoken to Stephen Bannon. And then they, the government in America would have a, will declare something for you. And then we'll guarantee that you will have exit visas for, as, as asylum, uh, political asylum uh, visas for you when you leave Hong Kong to go to America so that you'll be safe. So that, would, that was a conversation that was recorded down. And then you want to know who uh, Stephen Bannon is. Stephen Bannon was a security, a national security advisor to the Trump administration. And that was Mr. Guo Wen Gui with Stephen Bannon, and then Stephen Bannon with Donald Trump. So we can see all these connections. And then how could they use, you know, Sixers as the local proxy? as the well, local spy instead of foreign spy in Hong Kong. And then you see that that's how they were all connected. Now, Lawrence, I understand that you have collected evidence of these foreign spies in Hong Kong. Can you uh, show us some examples? Yes, I have collected some evidence, which were photographs and videos collected and shown publicly during the 2019 um, anti-extradition bill riot. Let's have a look at them. First, that would be a photograph of these white male gentlemen who appear to be in every protest since a protest back in uh, 2019. In uh, the 14th of July, he was seen in Sha Tin. There was a chaos in a shopping center in Sha Tin in, in 714. 721, he was seen charging against the liaison office of the central government in Hong Kong. And then 730, July the 30th, he was seen at the Kwai Chong police station organizing a protest. And then you can see him when he was actually photographed by reporters in, um, in a protest scene. And then he was seen to be the chief operation director. And there was a film about him directing the operation. Yes, this male Caucasian was directing the operation at the scene. 
And then the legs slide. If you look at that carefully, this gentleman was actually doing a gesture which appeared to be directing people at that place. So you, that would be quite clearly, that was how the operation was conducted. And then you can see also that gentleman also at this photograph. And there was this uh, pre-action, pre-rally uh, operation briefing by a operative of the CIA. And then that person was commonly seen at the scene, right? Before the riot happens, he, he was directing, talking to students, right? He was telling them how to do, how to respond. And that was the person who was, who was caught on camera. Thank you, Lawrence. And that is the program for today. Thank you for watching Legal Affairs. See you next time.